We're joined today by Terry Henderson and Michaela Blanc, uh, which I'm both really excited to get to work with them in this capacity. Um, have been familiar with their work in different ways for a little while now. Um, if you've read their bios already, then you know what they're bringing to this space. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and read both of their bios. Terry Henderson is the arts and culture editor of Baltimore Beat. She's the author of the 2021 book, Black Collages. Please get a copy if you can. Uh, previously, she was a staff writer for Be More Art, gallery coordinator for Connect and Collect, and served on the board of Maryland Volunteer Lawyers for the Arts. Henderson was a 2020 Momus Emerging Critics resident and is currently a 2023-2024 Poinacock Media and Journalism Fellow. So this is who we get to learn from today. Um, and then Michaela Blanc um, is a Brazilian art researcher based in the United States. She holds an MA in music edu museum education from Tutts University and a BA in art history from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. She was previously a curatorial fellow at the Mass Art Museum and is currently a Wikimedian residence at the Perez Art Museum in Miami. Her interest lies in critical race art history, exhibition strategies, and the reception of historically underserved audiences in art museums. She is the co-founder of Na Pupila, a curatorial collective that thinks critically about gender issues and power structures through visual arts in Brazil. Um, so with that said, I am going to uh, go ahead and turn it over to Terry to start us off um, with uh, her presentation. So thank you, Terry. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. Yeah. All right. Can y'all see it now? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. And at any point, if you need, um, if you have questions, feel free to interrupt me and I am just going to get into it. Um, so yeah, this is the Art of Feminism Workshop. Thank you, Kira and Nina uh, and Jude for being here today. And uh, this is a artwork that I always like to start off with um, by Gerda Hassel called Touchstone to be Measured. Uh, Gerde is uh, a Black collage artist and somebody who uh, is featured in my book. So let's go. Um, so I do want to start with this quote. Throughout history and across the diaspora, Black women have been responsible for trendsetting first and impressive cultural shifts that changed our world for the better. In the face of gender and racial bias, they have broken barriers, challenged the status quo, and fought for equal rights for all. It is critical to remember these women by retelling their stories of how they made society what it is today, during Black History Month, Women's History Month, and all year round. And that's a quote by Melissa Sutherland Mar Moss, who is uh, another Black collage artist. And that's uh, one of her artworks. Um, so today, I'm going to be guiding you through some exercises uh, about writing about art. Um, so we're going to begin with Hannah Hawk because it's Women's History Month and also Happy International Women's Day to everybody. So uh, this is a picture of Hannah. I wish, let me see if I can see her. How many of you all know who Hannah Hawk is? Anybody? Raise your hand. Yeah, some of you. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and read this. So known for her incisively political collages and photo montages, a form she helped pioneer, Hannah Hawk appropriated and recombined images and texts from mass media to, crit to critique popular culture and the socially constructed roles of women. After meeting artist and writer Raoul Hausman in 1917, Hawk became associated with the Berlin Dada Group a circle of mostly male artists who satirized and critiqued German culture and society following World War I. She exhibited their exhibitions, including the first international data fair in Berlin in 1920, and her photo montages received critical acclaim despite the patronizing views of her male peers. She reflected, 
Most of our male colleagues continued for a long while to look upon us as charming and gifted amateurs, denying us implicitly any real professional status. And so the reason I wanted to open this up uh, with Hannah's work is because she's kind of known as one of the original found founders of collage, which is a really big area of my research. Um, and just to give her some space in this place, also just really beautiful work. And when we get later on, when we look at Lorna Simpson's work, I think you might see some similarities. So let's look at a more contemporary artwork by Lorna Simpson. So I wanna ask y'all to think about these things as we are um, going through this, through these slides. So when you first look at this, um, think about what do you see? Form, shapes, colors, and composition. What is the piece saying to you? That includes subject matter, themes, and symbolism. And when, where, and why was the piece created? So that we might not be able to get to today uh, in, in this session, but it's a like context, historical, and cultural background. So for now, I want you to just look at these things and pull out by looking at this work, anything that you see, everything that comes to mind when you look at this collage. If it's a feeling that you feel, if you do know who Lorna Simpson is, if, you're, um, if you like it, if you hate it, whatever comes up. Oh yeah, and pl please feel free to put it in the chat. I appreciate that. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. The vibrancy of the Afro almost positioned as protest. All right. So next, um, so this is just some stuff that I pulled out. I see things like bold greens, blues, yellows, emanating out from the figure's crown. Obviously the central figure is a black woman. Um, there's the subject matter I picked it reflects the theme of black beauty and black women in power, which one of you touched on. Um, and it was created by a black woman collage artist uh, who was illustrating the beauty of black hair in a predominantly white society. So again, some of these things when you're when you're writing about a work, you might not know until later on when you research the artist. But for the purpose of this, I'm trying to just trying to get you to look and pull out and kind of, if you haven't written before, develop your own kind of art critical voice. So here's some context for who, who Lorna Simpson is. Uh, born in 1960, Simpson came of age as the flames of the Black power and pan-African movements blaze bright. The images of Black is Beautiful, which embraced Black hair and African features, became an integral part of her aesthetic sensibility. So Lorna's work is a lot of remixing and updating and um, kind of reconfiguring and challenging what people think is beautiful and beauty standards. And uh, a lot of her focus is on hair, as someone else po pointed out. And she's fantastic. If you're not familiar with, with her work, check, check her out. So this is another work by Lorna Simpson. So again, if you just wanna, if you want these slides sent to you, we can do that, I could do that too, but just these kinds of the questions that I'm thinking about when I'm looking at an artwork, like what emotions or thoughts does the artwork evoke? How does the artist use color, form and composition to convey a message or create an impact? So when I'm looking at this, um, Lyra Night Sky styled in NYC, I'm seeing these, this blue hair uh, background of constellations I think about this, the person dreaming. Um, also another part of Lorna's practice is she is a photographer. So I think about that when I'm thinking about her work. Are there any symbolic elements in the artwork? And is there anything in the artwork that surprises you? As you become more familiar with different artists that you're writing about or just looking at things, you might see something that doesn't make sense. And when you're, or when you're writing about it, that is a good place to start or pull out in your analysis or your critique, yeah. Um, so then uh, this is a collage by uh, Bell Hooks by Jen White Johnson. Um, they, uh, Jen has a platform called Collages for the Culture on Instagram. And I, just, I do just wanna read this quote. For too long in this culture, we have had to witness African art and African-American art talked about in ways that deny that there is something happen, happening in the work that is deep. Voices of marginalized populations are always historically si silenced by white supremacist power structure. And that includes the artistic voices of black and brown creators. So just as Hannah was kind of erased um, from her work with the Dada movement, it just keeps happening. That's part of the machine of white supremacy, unfortunately. Uh, so collaging is a microcosm of the art world at large. And so a lot of my work is about this. Correcting the art historical record is what we are doing today, which you will get into when we are updating and making these Wikipedia pages. 
So what is art criticism? So this is Michelle Wallace. Um, she's a cultural critic, scholar, genius, activist. Please look up her work. Uh, so art criticism is responding to, interpreting meaning, and making critical judgment, uh, judgments about specific works of art. Art critics help viewers perceive, interpret, and judge artworks. And critics tend to focus more on modern, modern and contemporary art from cultures close to their own. So myself as an art critic, art writer, uh, most of my focus is on black and brown and queer creatives, um, trying to tell stories that might not necessarily be told. Um, and I am the arts and culture editor of the Baltimore Beat, which is a black run, black led nonprofit newspaper. And, and all of our work is creating space for, for black, and, black and brown people. So um, when, and then the next thing is when initially introduced to art criticism, many people associate negative connotations with the word criticism. But a professional art critic may be a newspaper reporter assigned to the art beat, a scholar writing for professional journals or texts, or an artist writing about other artists. So all of y'all, when you do these things, are going to be art critics. Does anybody have any questions? So um, this is an artwork by Kalila Harris, a Black collage artist based in DC. Um, so kind of thinking about the difference between what art criticism is, versus art journalism, which is something that I struggle with. Uh, another thing that I wanted to say is that I do not have a background in art history uh, or journalism. I actually went to law school. That's how I ended up in Baltimore. And I pushed back against a lot of imposter syndrome with, with my work. And I, I'm also in this thing of figuring out my own critical voice, which is scary, but we're getting there. Uh, but I do wanna read this quote. I would argue that a necessary component of criticism is the analysis of an artwork, whereas journalism necessitates factual reportage on the events of the art world and its denizens. While an art journalist could report on, say, the opening of the new Renzo Piano Design Whitney Museum, an art critic would review the work in its opening show to include the clarity and worth of the exhibition's curatorial premise. So as an art critic, you might go into the, your local museum, pick out a piece, and write about it, the, like the things that we were saying earlier, how it makes you feel. You can research the context of when it was made, what was happening, research the artist specifically, research the subjects that are depicted. But as, an, as a kind of an art journalist, you might be the person that's there at the opening of the exhibition that's reporting on the facts and uh, or, or those that, that less of and that kind of analysis. Um, so now we're gonna get back into the, the fun part of this. So we're gonna take a look at this artwork by Thamiris Fortunato, who is an artist out of Brazil. So uh, this is the digital collage artwork that was commissioned by Art and Feminism uh, in 2021 that Kira introduced me to. And it's hosted by Wikipedia Commons as part of the Call to Action Art Commission. This is a beautiful collage artwork. And I, it's a digital collage, yes. So, so step one, I want you to think about this artwork in terms of textures, shapes and forms, light, dark, bright, dull, the types of lines and the sensory qualities. Like think about the shape of this rock in the background, these layers, think about the central figure. What colors do you notice? Do you see the artist's signature? Do you recognize the central figure? Is it somebody that looks familiar? Is it an abstraction? And so, and then ask yourself, how has the artist used color in the work? And what sort of effect do the colors have on the artwork? How do the artists use shapes within the work of art? Just kind of think about that. Well, I'll put these back up at the, at the end when it's time for you to write. So this is a lot of just about looking at the work, just actually just looking and, 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 and pulling those things out. So this, the next part is your interpretation, which is where we're trying to explain what the work means based on what you've learned so far. And that's just what we've learned in, in, in the looking and observation. So it's, it's things like, what do you think that the artist was trying to say? What do you think that it means, the actual artwork? What is it about? What does it mean to you personally? How does it, how does it make you feel? How does this relate to you and your life? Are there any elements in the artwork that might be familiar? What feelings do you have when looking at the artwork? That's my second favorite question ever. Uh, when, I, when I'm writing these things. Why do you think that the artist chooses to work in this manner? Like, why, why are they using collage versus why are they painting? And why did they make these kinds of artistic and aesthetic decisions? And why did the artist create this artwork? That's my favorite question to ask someone if I'm doing an interview. 
why did you make this? And and what? how do you feel about it? So finally, um, it's after the observation, analysis, interpretation, you're ready to make your own judgment. So this is your personal evaluation based on the understandings of the work. And that's just all of these, all of these things that you've thought about. Um, so what is the value that you find in the work? So for example, this piece by the artist represents, not for this one, but represents black women in full embodied glamor and adornment as illustrated by the halo of collage jewels that encases the subject. So for this, it would be this, we'll, we'll get to what this is about in, in one second. So now it is y'all's turn. So um, I want you to tell the audience, the invisible audience about what you're looking at, what you see, the step, and then the second part is explaining the meaning of the work based on what you've learned so far. And that is just what you've learned by looking at it. And then the third part is tell the audience um, what the work means to you. Why is it important? How does it make you feel? And what is going on? There's no right or wrong answers. I really would love for some of y'all to share your writing when you're done. Um, and, and then we will get to what the art, the, um, the work is actually about or what the artist's intention was after the exercise. So does anybody have any questions um, before we start writing or typing? I'll start a timer. So we have like three more minutes. So what, what I want you to do is look at this artwork and answer these, these three questions and think about it in terms of the, the art in parts, textures, shapes, forms, and colors. And then in two minutes, I'll go to the next slide, which is step two. And you'll answer those questions, and then we'll do step three and, until we reach your uh, your analysis. Does that help? All right, let's do it. Starting the timer. And so something that, to think about is like when I'm thinking about colors, like I, the, for example, like the color red, sometimes I think about it as an interruption because it kind of makes you focus in on something. So why did the artist put red in the middle? What is What does that make your eye do? Or what does that make you your you focus on? And then like, for example, with this work, the background is pretty muted. Um, what tone does that set? If it had been something that was more textured or um, maybe a darker color, or if the background was red, that would, that would create a different feeling. So now we're gonna go on to the next slide, which is your interpretation. So this is where we're kind of talking about, again, sorry, that was the timer. Um, to, explaining the meaning of the work based on what you've learned from just looking at it a moment ago. So these are the questions that you ask yourself. What do you think the artist is trying to say? What do you think it means? What does it mean to you? Um, how does this relate to you and your life? What feelings do you have when looking at the artwork? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Does it make you uncomfortable? Does it make you want to buy it? What do you think that the artist, why do you think the artist chose to work in this manner? and made these kind of artistic decisions? And why did the artist create this artwork? So I will go to the next one. And I guess if somebody could let, if somebody needs me to go back, just let me know. So this finally is your critique, getting an analysis. So done the observation, the interpretation, and now you're going to make your own judgment, which is your writing. So it's your personal evaluation based on your understanding as an art writer, uh, of the work. So what, what value do you find in the work? Why do you think it's important? So when you're approaching something that you're writing about, this is where it comes out that you, what compelled you to write about this thing. I'd love to hear, hear y'all's uh, critique or analysis of the work. Anybody? Also don't have to, it's Friday, I know. <laughs> oh, thanks, Mike. Do you, oh, wonderful. Is it, do you want me to read it? Is that okay? Cool. Um, so Mike says, the brave soul, I appreciate you. A black and white image of a black woman is surrounded by bold patterns, is overlaid onto a collage of muted natural elements, including water and stone. The composition draws the eye towards the woman's gaze. Her expression is not immediately identifiable and the image has a timeless quality, kind of like a Mona Lisa vibe, yes. For me, it started up an internal dialogue about the idea of natural beauty, Maybe because of the circle around the individual contains decorative elements in an earring, which could straddle the line between the natural and built environment. Yes, I appreciate the layer, no pun intended, quality of the work. And I feel like it could be unpacked over repeated viewings. That was amazing. Thank you, Mike. That was great. You did that very quickly too. Thank you. <laughs> it's fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Uh, 
Is it okay if I read yours, Gabe? Cool. Uh, so Gabe says, the art used earthy but mild tones. The lighter tan brown of the rock houses the rest of the artwork, which uses elements of water above and below the central figure. The central figure is a black woman in a black and white photograph whose gaze is off center from the observer of the artwork. Behind the central figure is a pattern of black, red, white, and tan. The pattern is likely related to a specific culture as decorative or textiles art, yes. As for what the artwork means, I could not say definitively. In art, there are times when artists create for aesthetic pleasure, yes. My guess is that there may be a surrealist or abstract meaning relating to the black woman, water, and the patterns above, behind her and on her clothing. The artwork does not demand feeling. That's beautiful. It simply to, it seems to simply exist. The colors are not distracting, though they are not exactly complementary nor match. With the artist being from Brazil, my guess is that there is a larger cultural component to the work that is beyond my current understanding. As of now, it seems to be an artwork that focuses on a woman. That was beautiful. Thank you. And that that definitely does highlight something that like for the, when you have more time and you're able to see a work, see it again research the artist, you'll be able to develop more things. And also as you become more familiar, if you're writing about artists over and over, you learn these things, like these histories that they hold and that will be able to become a part of your analysis or your critique. Thank Sorry. you. Sorry, this is Nina speaking. Just wanted yeah. to point out that we do have one person with their hand raised and oh. maybe we can go to the ch back to the chat after Isaiah. Oh yeah, hi, I was, I thought I could read something. Yeah, please do, please do um just something short it's more of like a fragment um but i really liked this artwork and i'm really interested in um afro portuguese cultural production so i thought this was really cool thank you <laughs> so i just wrote um, a shell a sea a fragment of textile african fractals fragments of africa brazilian artist Dimares Fortunados, Toto Omar and Mim Globoco Okuninu Mi, a whole sea in me, is like a shark fin against the pallid sea. Afro Portuguese artists, in comparison to their Anglophone and Francophone counterparts, remain conspicuously absent from the world art scene. And that's as far as I got. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. That's so great. Thank you. I appreciate you. And I, I think that. I really love when I'm able to write in those kinds of poetic fragments. I think when I'm when I am writing kind of for for the newspaper, I have to switch into the art journalism thing and I'm and I'm less able to to do those sweeps that you did. It was that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Thanks y'all. So, um Tamira, is it okay if I read yours? Sure. Awesome. Uh, okay. So the work is a digital collage. It is composed by a succession of elements that superpose each other on a muted yellow mustard background. The first element to the back is a rock whose surface texture contrasts the flat background, pulling some of its yellow shades. Then we see what looks like the corners of a color photograph of an ocean. To the center, we see a beautiful pattern with red, yellow, and white shapes and black lines that remind me of African fabrics. Over that, we see a black and white photograph of a black woman. And finally, on top of it, it's still some colorful elements that could be another piece of fabric blue background and yellow circular dotted decoration, a piece of ear jewelry, a seashell and a leaf, and finally some yellow graphisms over the face. The piece makes me think simultaneously about the connection to nature and the transformation of nature and the jewelry and its interpretation and transgression for art expression and the abstract, pa abstract patterns. That was really beautiful. And I really do appreciate how all of y'all have paid so much attention to tail, which I feel like seems like a silly thing to say in this kind of exercise, but it's really important. And I think that it helps your readers understand what's going on. So like by reading this, I was able to think about the image. Uh, so I really appreciate that. And Gail, is it all right if I read yours? Awesome. Okay, so the work is a digital collage by the Brazilian artist, the Maris Fortunato. A black and white photographic image of a black woman surrounded by colorful components is superimposed on an image of a rock. The image has a strong three-dimensional quality. A sharp square portrait image includes a background and a foreground that appear to be landscapes. Brightly colored patterns, evocative of Afri African fi fabric prints surround the face and draws our attention to the face. The rock in the background implies an ancient artifact. By superimposing this portrait on top of the rock, 
The artist may be communicating the long history that preceded the life of the woman in the portrait and the lives of those she represents. That's beautiful. While the photo appears to be somewhat old, the bright colors around it provide a more modern feel. The blue and green background images in the upper left and right impart a feeling of distance. To me, the piece uses a very small number of elements to convey the expanse of history and time and distance traveled by the African diaspora. There is a sense of the endurance of, the, of culture over distance and time. That is fantastic. Y'all are so good. Amazing. So great. Thanks, y'all. Um, that was wonderful. Now we're going to see what the artist was saying. So this is the artist uh, who lives and works between Rio de Janeiro and Bahia, Brazil, a multiple dis multidisciplinary artist who works with digital collage and video art. Like I said, this is an artist that Art and Feminism commissioned a, a new work of art from, one of three, I believe. So this is directly from the artist statement. So Whole Sea and Me is referencing Yemanya, who was the mother of the sea and the head's Ori. The collage work represents a vision for contemporary aesthetics, and in my work specifically acknowledges the resistance of Black culture. In that sense, my work re-signifies the way we look at archival images by shedding a light on aspects that were neglected in the history of Black diaspora in Brazil. The collages adhere to a Black narrative and allow for new symbologies and identities through image production. So I feel like all of y'all kind of hit on this in different ways, and each of you picked out really unique and incredible things. I'm blown away and inspired. Um, and so I do want to leave you this quote by Toni Morrison on International Women's Day. And her birthday was last month, I believe. Um, there is no time for despair, no place for self-pity, no need for silence, no room for fear. We speak, we write, we do language. That is how civilizations heal. So in this time of so many terrible things. Um, this is the time where writers write and artists make work and we don't despair. We make work, make art. So this is Toni Morrison. And this is a work by Shan Wallace, who is based in Baltimore and is a genius. You should also check out Shan's work. But if you need anything, any questions, y'all want to pitch something, email me because you're really great. And then the IG that is um, for my curatorial platform which focuses on black and brown uh, or black collage artists specifically is black collages. And I do just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And thank you all for uh, participating again. I know it's Friday afternoon. Thank you. Yeah, I am. So especially for a Friday afternoon, I'm so <laughs> moved by everything that has been shared and definitely want to give you all space to ask Terry more questions. Um, we are kind of in a transition point where we are going to transition into some wiki training from Michaela um, as we continue. I want to let, before I start asking some questions, I want to let uh, any of the other participants, uh, if you have questions for Terry, this will be a good time to ask. So. To kind of involve Michaela in this as we get ready to start doing some wiki editing, I'm wondering if both of you all can talk about, you know, your research processes. Uh, Terry, I feel like you started mentioning a little bit of that. Like, what does it look like for you as an arts writer to research in order to, you know, talk about either an artist or their works or an exhibition? Uh, so I think that the difference between my work out in the real world and not in this uh, Zoom space is that I do have time to, to spend with artists. Um, most of my research for when I'm writing for publications, like the, the paper or, or, or other art magazines, is the research like is like you said, studio visits. Um, a lot of my research is Instagram, which I hate to say because the other day when Instagram went down, I was like, oh, wow. I can't work today, but it's it's a lot of like bookmarking out folders of artists who I want to write about. I learn about openings and stuff through Instagram, um, but I really do enjoy studio visits because I like asking those questions like, why did you make this? Like, what are you working on right now that you're excited about? And that can even be like a virtual studio visit. It doesn't have to be a physical studio visit or in real life. Um, and then a lot of, a lot of reading. Uh, I love to work in the library 
Um, Baltimore, the Enoch Pratt Library has a black uh, reading room, which is specifically African-American books that I find a lot of inspiration in there when I just have a lot of writer's block. Uh, and then just talking to artists is, even if it's not somebody that I'm writing about, it's just like my friends that are DJs or musicians, like kind of hearing about their process helps me to get out of my head and figure out what I'm doing. So it's a lot of, lot of, lot of looking at images all day, all the time, just looking at work, even if I'm not really thinking about writing about it at that point, just taking it in and then cataloging it and coming back to it. Well, hi everyone. Um, Deirdre, thank you so much. Um, I have so many questions, but I'll keep them for later. And um, I think for me, yes, I agree. I think looking at art pretty much every day. Um, and also I'm obsessed with interviews, uh, just interviewing other artists. Because as an art historian, I often tend to look at artworks and thinking about periods and references. And when I see artists looking at other artists' work, um, it's illuminating to me, honestly, because of the way they think and the, how they practice. And often when they're looking and in investigating a media and they're at questioning about an artist, about other media, and that's actually helped me. And I, I learn a lot from artists. Uh, again, I'm... But I'm based in Pittsburgh, but I'm now in Miami because of my work at film. And I come here every once in a while. And I'm here right now and coming to the artist studios and, of course, my colleagues in the museum and seeing and looking uh, artwork in 3D, which is not on the screen. Um, and, of course, it's a cliche, but it's so real. That makes such a big difference. Um, and I work from home, so I'm always mesmerized when I see a good uh, sculpture and a painting, good painting. So yeah, I think looking at how artists, they navigate among the artistic community is pretty much what I'm so interested about doing this work. Um, yeah, pretty much it. And at all of the other things, right? You just go into museums and just navigating society with colors and looking at how people connect to each other. Thank you both um, for your responses. And Michaela, I'm wondering if you can also talk a little bit more about this from like a wiki perspective and like you know we rely so much on folks like Terry for the work that we do and I'm wondering if you can share more about you know how our published art writing is essential to what we do but also you know how we're navigating notability challenges and biases and all of that. Absolutely yeah so uh, folks like Terry uh, or colleagues in the at writing world, uh, they're so, so important to the work we do, because as some of us know, everything that we include on Wiki, uh, it has to be a, a secondary source, meaning that we can only include content that it's being paraphrased about something that is already out there in the world. So especially for art writing and thinking about uh, the represented um, marginalized communities in the art world, we really need art writers looking uh, in alternative paths uh, that finding out about new artists and writing about uh, other artists. They're especially the overlooked artists from the, the major art system. We have so many words for, you know, the traditional uh, art historical narratives. Um, anyway, so we really, need, we really need the the art writing for this. Uh, so please publish, please write about Fortunato's work, for instance. You guys did an amazing, amazing job. <laughs> I know Fortunato personally. Um, again, they will be thrilled uh, about your impressions on their work, uh, really. Uh, it was amazing. And uh, yeah, we need you to write more and more. So people like me can go on Wiki and include uh, your citations. That's really pretty much the work I've been doing is just finding people like you writing amazing, beautiful things that they're actually facts, uh, but in beautiful poetic ways. So I can use them as a reference to back up uh, the lives of artists that people often don't know about them, and, but doesn't mean that they're not out there creating amazing artwork. They do exist. Uh, we just have to highlight them as much as we can. Yeah. I'll be talking about it more with actual articles from Wiki, so you can see how big difference this can do for the, the Wikipedia and society in general. Yeah, um, thank you for that. I think, you know, as an editor, being really intentional about who I'm citing when I'm writing on Wiki is um, important. Like, 
um, everyone's perspective is, you know, especially when you're talking about Black artists or, you know, people from other marginalized identities. Um, I think something else when I was uh, trying to put together some tasks for this uh, workshop that I noticed, uh, if you all are not familiar, Black Lunch Table is an organization that does um, work similar to Art and Feminism. It's focused on Black visual artists um, and they are all about, well, they have, I guess, you know, different um, aspects of their work, but their wiki project is about, you know, filling in the gaps on Wikipedia around Black artists. Um, and something that I notice when looking up even, you know, artists that I'm familiar with is like there is coverage out there, you know, on these artists and still people, you know, Wikipedia editors aren't covering them in the encyclopedia. So there are some biases to like within our editing community um, that we can, you know, work to correct as well. Um, before I hand it over to Michaela, I'm wondering, Terry, if you have any questions. No, I do not. I don't. So thank you both. I am going to um, turn it over to Michaela now um, to talk more about writing about art on Wikipedia. I guess I should say happy International Women's Day month uh, in this lovely Friday. It's amazing that I get to do this with you, spending this day with you all, uh, people from all over. I'm Michaela, I use her Ella pronouns. I'm originally from Brazil, but I've been living in the U.S. for a few, for a while ago now. And I am part of this amazing community, which is Art and Feminism and Wikipedia and Wikimedia at large. And I'm here today after Terry's talk, which was amazing. I got to write about art uh, for a bit today already. Um, and I, I'm here actually to share what I know about Wikipedia. Um, and if you already know this, please bear with me. And... What I know about Wiki, actually, first I have a question and you can share in the chat, you can open your mic. I just want to know if you guys actually use Wikipedia for something or anything. So when was the last time um, did you use Wikipedia? What what did you look, I don't know, what is your search? What have been searching on Wikipedia? You can share or not. I, I can read for you, Michaela. This yes, is me please, speaking. Nina. Um, so Terry said this morning looking up when someone was born. Z said this morning um, about Women's Day in different languages. Um, Mike said, I have to research a lot for work and many times it's the place I go to start learning about a person or subject, etc. Gabe, yes, I use Wikipedia often to get a general understanding of a topic. My last search was about Napoleon Bonaparte and understanding his impact on modern nation states. Kira looked up Lorna to link in this chat session. Uh, Francine, every day. Yes, Ooh. check Wiki every day. Uh, Maeve, I looked up Frida Carlos life dates in the two minutes before class on Wednesday because I realized I hadn't written it down. Magoika, today evening before leaving work, contributing on women in law. Isaiah linked, provided a link on the white gaze, uh, they, they, an article on the white gaze on Wikipedia. Um, Francis, Francoise Berger, Ver, I don't know how to say that name, Rita, I'm so sorry. Amber, I use Wikipedia at least once a week to look up things about people I don't know about. Carmen, when I read a book, I like to look up for things I don't know. Okay, so we do use Wikipedia in this group. <laughs> it's actually a reflection of, you know, the, actually on a global spectrum, we all use Wikipedia and we do it a lot uh, and I have that. I really like graphs. I'm an art historian that loves a really good image of charts and bars. Uh, so I'm going to show some of them to you today. And um, yeah, I think I just want to put everyone in the same page on the wiki page, meaning that we all use this platform a lot. So, and we'll be editing because I think there's a difference between consumes and I'm going to say this what consumes because even though Wiki is not a social media platform, which means that it's not a private uh, enterprise in that sense. Uh, Wikipedia is actually consumed and made by us, people like us. Um, and we should be actually writing, and I know that you can write because you just did it. So we should be including all this amazing content on Wiki to share with more and more people now that we know that we all use Wikipedia for different purposes. 
Um, and we're not just, it's just not us using it. Uh, Google pulls data from Wikipedia projects and Wikimedia, different projects, different languages. There are over 300 Wikimedias, uh, meaning over 300 languages. And Wikipedia is all over where it consume information and knowledge on the internet. And we are using it even sometimes when we don't think we're using it. Uh, so yeah, just wanted you guys to know because this is information that is actually, it changes a lot when we think about it critically. And you know, we've been thinking a lot, well, something because there are over 300 languages. We'll be talking a little bit about the English uh, Wikipedia. The things they don't get much better in other languages, unfortunately, and I don't, I'm not here today to make you upset, uh, but I think we should all know about this information. This was a research, uh, a paper, really, a really interesting paper by Francesca Tripodi. Um, Francesca, if you're in the audience, I'm sorry, but a redacted notable uh, in your sense. I just find this sentence really important in your paper, but notable. It's debatable because not all men on in wiki projects, they're notable, yet they're there. <laughs> uh, and something said about this data is just that there's a bazillion biographies. 17% um, is about women. So that's why you're here today, um, really. And I can share later the paper with you and because this is such a really good piece of information. So yeah, uh, why you're here today to address the underrepresentation and really talk uh, about women's and non-binary people's perspectives uh, and highlight our work, um, our progress uh, and our collective effort on being here together, sharing space. Um, and there is bias on Wikipedia. It's real, uh, it just reflects society in general. Uh, but because we are here already online, we might as well just counteract it, right? So uh, we can do it together. This will be a really a crash course. Uh, so who is a typical editor? Should be you, right? Me, all of us. And these are real uh, weak media stats. Just so you know, in the month of February, which was yesterday, basically, uh, we can get 11 billion clicks. Um, I'm going to pause on this number because it's a big number. Um, and again, if you're looking for information, the database that only 17% of biographies are about women, for instance, uh, we might be missing some real history here if you break up the number um, and thinking about, you know, on a global spectrum, just English Wikipedia today, but anyway. But because it's a huge community with big numbers in, in the billions, we have a couple of guidelines um, and you may or may not agree with me. Uh, and I don't agree with all of the Wikipedia rules, even though I'm there. <laughs> And because we have this stay neutral policy, which is just just for the wiki purposes, just encyclopedic uh, language, uh, using theories, uh, publications, and text. So just use verifiable information from reliable sources and notability, something that we will be talking about further uh, in the next slides, because it is debatable who gets to be notable and who says so. Um, it's a question. And actually, from all of the guidelines, and there's more, of course, but this is my main issue with Wiki, honestly. Because due to this day, sometimes we have to challenge uh, the common sense of notability. And meaning notability it doesn't mean that it's always good. And of course, we can ask each other's help uh, because there are disputes. It's real, it's a community made by people. Um, these are real numbers made by people, clicks by people. And I know it's just getting weird, too many numbers, but it will be writing in a bit. But before we do it, I just wanna pause and ask you guys, one, if you're ready. <laughs> And two, 
if there are any outstanding questions because the next set of slides will be about just clicking and doing the work and finding a couple of sources online. And okay, so some something cool about this, this slide is just that I pulled this out from Wikimedia Commons, which is just a sister project from Wikipedia, um, and it's kind of our Wikipedia for images. It's funny thing that not all of the images that we want, we can find there, but we can change also this. We can also include images on Wikimedia Commons. This will be a different training. <laughs> Maybe next 8th March, March 8th, we can do a uh, Wikimedia Commons training, but it becomes, it comes handy when we need uh, go good, really good images. And again, that's why we need the, the work of uh, publications and archives uh, sharing information online so we, we can keep up on this work. I hope you guys are still there uh, because now it's our time to edit. Um, and before we do it, I just want you to familiarize and you might know you've seen a Wikipedia page before because I know you've been searching on it. But now I want to change a little something in your brain from, you know, reader to writer and what we'll be looking at today this is Marcela's Con Marcela Cantuaria's page she happens to be also another Brazilian artist Terry and I it's a match um, and Marcela has been uh, exhibiting in the U.S. Um, in in all over the, the globe honestly but she has a English Wikipedia page and I, because I made this page I thought it would be a good example of a page uh, to share of what it just looking good. So you can see the name of the person, the human here. Um, and there's a section on education. There's this little info box right here. There's green arrows all over pushing to the important information. Your name will be on this upper right corner on your screen. And probably if you just open your account, it will be red. Um, and I'm going to show you in a bit that you can just click on it and say yes to whatever box comes up on your screen. And you're going to write something about you that doesn't really identify you at the same way that we think in a capitalist world, let's say. You don't have to put your school name, your workplace, even your real name. You can just, it's your, you can create a fun, you know, nickname because it's just a wiki account. Uh, what in, what, the, what matters here is just what you're going to do with it. Um, so don't, don't put too much work on introducing yourself. Um, but that's how actually you introduce yourself to the wiki community. So you can say that you're interested in art, you're interested in sciences, you interview artists, you're here for references, or you're just here because it's Friday and why not? Anyway, so again, we have basic tools. This is just you being a writer, not the reader anymore. And this is the most important line in this page that is actually your toolkit. This is your toolbox. And you're going to need the, all of the, this little buttons here. Don't be afraid of this platform because there's no way to break it. It's just up for 20 years. And I'm sure that one workshop is not going to damage anything. So don't be afraid of click on, on anything, but be mindful that at the bottom of the page, every week page, we have this amazing list of references that is just my magical tool. I get a lot of good book <laughs> uh, suggestions from Wikipedia pages from artists, uh, monographs, etc. Sometimes I am searching for the name and they just, they thumbs up. Anyway, so this is a list of references, and this is actually very thorough, uh, well-researched. Uh, haha, I did it um, for my Zealous page. Uh, and we will be thinking about this as we navigate Wikipedia. And we will include one reference today in each page we find. But now, and there's also a talk page. We can talk or not about it, but I just want you to know that this exists, and this is how we communicate with other Wikimedians, um, and we do it. We, sometimes we even fight on those pages, and it's wild. You can imagine, and it's real. 
But then we also have our user page. That's probably where you are. This is my Spanish one. Uh, and I use it sometimes, not often, but I do, I added the Portuguese to make sense, which is my native, native language and the English one because of my work. Um, but then we go, we move beyond the biography. And I'm going to show you some pages that they do need care. And you have a task list and you can, you can choose. But for instance, Tamika's page, I made some edits yesterday because it was so sad to actually, it's a win when you find the page. So we should celebrate all the small, you know, all the small wins, right? So Tamika has a page, yes. But the page is a little bit sad. It doesn't really reflect Tamika's work uh, in career. It absolutely doesn't reflect her as artistic practice. So another option for you today is just including a section between exhibitions and education about artistic practice and do the beautiful, amazing job you just did with theory, but including some of resources and references we can find available. I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna hold your hand in a minute. I just wanna show you how they can, you know, need your help, uh, the pages. Tamika is one of them. And there's also, you know, Khalid the Rawls. Uh, Khalid's page is a little bit more robust and she has the artistic practice um, headline. And we can describe an artwork, you can describe a series. Um, you don't really need to read this right now. There's a bunch of her references. Kali does work, it's actually based on novels and amazing literature. Uh, as you can see, some of them, uh, James Baldwin, Tavia Butler, Toni Morrison, who wishes just had this beautiful quote um, and another other couple of amazing writers that we know or don't or we should look it up. And there's Juana Valdez, who is also another brilliant, brilliant artist. And here the Wikipedia actually expanded a bit more on her series and her different series of work. And you can see that rest assured and uh, the history of bodies, they all have a small section. And it's just quite similar to what you just did uh, with Theory's exercise. Someone came here, they were looking, works in the, the series of Press Ashore, for instance, and they decided that they should include the themes, uh, what the work's about, the description, and of course the context, the, which is a uh, Cuba migration between the 60s and the 80s uh, in the US, in the case of South Florida, where I'm just here right now thinking about all of this context and history. And now that I've been talking a lot, now is our, our time to do it together. I need one volunteer actually, who actually made a page firsthand today or yesterday, and is just creating a username and want to navigate this with the rest of the group. If there's no, it's fine if you don't want to volunteer. I can do it, I will do it again. But I already know, so it doesn't, you know. What what should we do? Please tell me. This is Nina speaking. Um, you want to create user pages for the new folks? Are yeah, so I would love a volunteer who wants to share their user page so we can do it together. This is Nina speaking. Yes. Uh, Carmen says that she will volunteer. So we have a volunteer. Amazing. That's brilliant. Okay. I have this a question. Carmen is, oh, I'm sorry. This is Carmen speaking. How do I, how does this work? Okay, Carmen. So uh, would you like to share your screen so I can point to you? Cool, cool, cool. So going into your Wikipedia page, Carmen. It seems like you already have a user page, but it will be just, you know, creating a brief description. So what Kami is doing is just that she's inside of Wiki and she clicked on her username, that which is clickable and yours might be red, um, but it's just a matter of publishing something that it turns in blue. So comment for the purpose of uh, using, and thank you so much for volunteer, of course. 
Um, we will go ahead and uh, you can click on create source on your right, yes. And then uh, tell me a bit about what you like, Carmen. Do you like art? Do you like um, food? I don't know. Uh, and then you can write, you know, I am participating in the program uh, and I am creating my account. You can add it later while you'll be editing and getting familiar with the platform. And you can say that you're interested in the arts. Uh, and if you're not interested in arts and you're interested in something else, you can also write about it. Lovely. Okay, this is you. So you can scroll scroll down. Um, and you go on, do you see the edit summary? This little box, you don't have to click on it. You just uh, write on this blank space saying created user page. You don't have to say much, but you have to say enough so other wiki editors don't get suspicious about uh, what your intentions are on Wikipedia. And they are totally right of being suspicious because Sometimes we have bad actors and it's not great. And after uh, you've done it, you can just publish the page and that will be it. And I, you guys on Zoom can just follow through and that will be the major step uh, to be on Wiki. Uh, this is Carmen speaking. Uh, what was the thing that I, do, I, I needed like to write like, under the edit summary? Yes, uh, you can just, it's a very brief statement what your actions on Wiki. So you can just say that created user page. So every time that you edit content, there's a box that pops up on your screen asking you to explain to the community what, you've, what are you doing, why you're doing, and you what you just did. So this is actually a good example. Uh, any, it's just a summary. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So I can hit publish. Don't, yeah. Here we go. Ooh la la, we should clap. Okay, yes, very good. Thank you so much, Corbin. Um, this is lovely. We've done it. So for you guys at home uh, at work, we can just uh, follow Carmen's example, which was brilliant, amazing. Amazingly done. And now, because we do have a list, we are going to edit and I'm gonna share my screen again so you can see the buttons we need. And I'm here for questions because one of the things that I hope we can do today is actually finding a reference. So uh, do you remember that list uh, that we have on the chat, we will find uh, a name of an artist we like, and we probably go on JSTOR, whichever library you use, or could be Google, of course, Google, and we'll find uh, a source that you think it's important. And I really hope for us to discuss what is notable um, and about the source. And I can do it online, but just let me know how are you feeling and i love that question of going back to theater's presentation um what do you feel about this work i love the feeling question this is nina speaking um i just wanted to check because i know terry had a question before i'm not sure if terry still had that question yes please yes i did so it was about notability um yes so how does so for example i, I write for a, an art publication that's like a national publication but I also write for like a local newspaper and my question is how does someone slash a publication become notable like, like we know that the work is valuable and we're highlighting certain voices but who gets to say when our work is notable like who does that that's a very important question and am I I might only have half of the answer because I first I would say that it is notable, uh, your work is notable, 
Um, it goes without saying that you're doing important work, but for Wikipedia standards, um, they tend to rely on uh, newspapers, uh, peer-reviewed journals and academic publications. And to so we can write and use uh, what they call reliable sources as references. For instance, to write a page about the magazine. I think we should do it honestly. Um, we should, and often it's important to challenge those standards because not everyone gets profiled on a New York Magazine piece, unfortunately. Um, so sometimes with the major news outlets, they are not looking at works outside of their zone of comfort, honestly. Uh, and we know that, and you probably know that too, because you're doing the amazing work of looking at other ways of including voices uh, in publications. So uh, I think it's a little bit of try and an error. Uh, we should try, we should do it because we believe in it. And I think when I first added a few years ago, someone told me, oh, you know, the logo of Wikipedia is actually be bold. <laughs> so, and I really agree on building this trust. And if you trust and if you use sources, uh, the other Wikipedians, they will understand that this is actually worth noticing and worth, you know, it's actually something that people are looking for this information online and they can't find elsewhere. And we do have sources to back this up. There's a huge history of publications, uh, black newspapers, etc., so on and so forth. So there are other ways that we can, I, I couldn't, maybe I shouldn't say this, but we should hack the system this way. Um, if we don't have a, a reference that quotes directly your magazine, for instance, but there are other ways that we can uh, include references that they are, they are relevant to the theme that we're editing. So I yeah, that's what it, that's why I told you that I would only have half of the answer. Um, I can't uh, assure you that the page would stick on Wikipedia, even though I believe it would. Uh, but it's just hard to predict sometimes. Okay, guys. Are we editing? Are you good? I want to hear more, you know, experiences and uh, thoughts and reflections. Maeve, I'm curious about how you choose pages for available articles for groups like this. Um, do you want to talk about that process, Michaela, or do you want me to share? Yeah, uh, we can talk. Yes, Nina, you can talk and I can compliment. Yeah, I think um, one place to look is different task lists that projects, wiki projects create. So um, I think if someone can share our task list, the art and feminism task list again, um, if you go to that page, we also direct you to other task lists, um, which if you're a new user, honestly, can be kind of overwhelming. But um, so I basically kind of went through a, a couple different task lists from Black Lunch Table and then also from um, another art and feminism event that happened recently in Houston, where they did create some new articles and edit. Um, some stubs because I know they would need more work. So that's how I selected articles for this um, event. And Michaela, you can talk a little bit more about selecting articles for events. Right, yes, it's true. We do uh, borrow from several task lists and they are already on Wiki. There's a huge community that is just thinking about it, how to expand knowledge on artists, especially overlooked artists, and complementing pages of artists, really well-known artists. For instance, I was yesterday teaching a workshop here in Miami, and someone found that Carrie Mae Weems' page doesn't really have a photo on her profile, which is, to me, very amazing. It's just, I was amazed by it, because Carrie Mae Weems, it's well-known, and she just delivered a talk here in Miami in early February, so 
this group was aware of, of course, her lecture, they were there and they looked up, the page was uh, in the, it was just empty. So the only photograph you could find on Wikimedia Commons because of licensing, you cannot use all images we find online. So on Creative Commons, uh, the only page, a photograph was Carrie May Wings showing a photograph to John Carey. And that's the only image available on Wikimedia Commons. And we had this amazing discussion whether we should include uh, Carrie May Wings with John Carey or not. Um, they decided, uh, the editor, that they would do it. And if the Wikimedia community decided that it's not worth having it or keeping it, they would take it down. Um, and because I'm just mediating, I decided not to express my views on it, um, but I'm just sharing this uh, little account because it's actually really fitting on your question. So sometimes uh, we borrow and we don't know what it's actually coming. So that's why it's just interesting that we're building on other folks' works. Um, and because I work for museums, I do curatorial research for different venues. I get their lists and often the femme identify it, uh, cis trans and non-binary people, they don't have pages at all. Um, and I'm always, you know, interested in helping to expand this scholarship because if you go into a museum and you might be looking for more information. So, uh, yeah, I would just, it's actually a really good exercise. If you go to a group show, for instance, you might be finding uh, information of, you tend to find information about male artists. Uh, this is more uh, anecdotally, but it's it's actually real based on the data I showed you earlier. So yeah, it's just coming from, you know, there's no interest in amazing lists that people put together online. What else? We have more questions. This is Nina speaking. I can yes. also read some more from the chat. Um, Isaiah is working on creating a new page for Maria Lydia Magliani, another great Amazing. Brazilian artist. Um, so I just want to um, highlight that. I think something that we emphasize um, at Art and, Fem Art, Art and Feminism is collective editing. So if you're working on that article and you want some support from Art and Feminism editors, um, that's that's the strategy we use to help protect against, you know, harassment or, you know, challenges around notability, et cetera, et cetera. So feel free to share with us if you want some other folks to help you in um, writing that article. Um, and then Rita has this question about adding an exhibition. Um, yes. I think to Marcella's page, do you want to... I know Miranda offered an answer. Um, Rita, do you want to share your screen or um, want some support from uh, Michaela in updating that page? I can also go there. Um, and we can work together on this, Rita. Do you have the link? So before we move along, I want to go back to Isaiah's point. So I created the Maria Mag Lydia Magliani's Portuguese page. Um, and uh, there is a page in Portuguese for Maria Lydia. And I can help you later with links and scholarship because I'm so interested in her work. And I was in a book talk the other day and someone was actually writing about it. And I guess the, pub the book was published. Um, this is on a side note. But here you are with Chia Siata, which is actually um, the image that is being portrayed on Fortunato's artwork. And here we go. Let's go, Hita. So having a link, it's quite important. I found something online. This was recently published by the Latin American Studies uh, Department at Harvard, uh, but I know that you're trying to include uh, an exhibition. So I am also have a link and I'm just going to show you. You select the link on Google and then you go back 
to your little page. I don't know why my page keeps stop sharing by itself. Zoom sometimes behaves so weird. Let's see, here we are, remember, inside of our little wiki. And I'm gonna hit edit because I'm bold, do you remember? And yes, we notice about sources, that's why you're here. And this is how the interface looks when you're on the other side. And because I do have a link about Brazilian women artists that was just recent pub recently published, and I know this article because I've been reading and writing on it, and because Marcela is a Brazilian artist and she is based in Brazil, so what is relevant to us right now? Do you remember that task toolbox? You can play with these little buttons, but what we are doing is just this quote right here. And we also gonna click on it and this little box magically shows up. And it's giving me three options, automatic, manual, and reuse. So we will do it automatically and what you're going to do, I'm just going to paste the link I have from that revista, from the Latin American studies. And I'm just going to create, and please look to this amazing magical button. I'm going to hit create. And ta -da, it did it itself. So we have this tool, which I really love. And I can just include insert. And bam, there's a new reference that talks about visual artists in Brazil, female visual artists. And there you go. And then I hit publish. Now this is Kira speaking. Rita said in the chat that uh, I've done it on Portuguese Wikipedia. Oh, there you go. Okay. So you might even find even more references. Um, let me just publish. And I would say added reference. There we go. Um, it's there right now. So Hita, do you see there's one language? I'm in the English one and I'm gonna find, and the only language I can find is actually Portuguese. I would love for Marcelo to have a Spanish one, but that will be for another day. So I'm gonna click on it and here is Marcela's uh, translate. I think it was written in Portuguese first and then uh, she got an English one. So here we go. It's not very different. It actually is just pretty much the same. We're going to in the edit, editar, and tem um aviso. Rita, do you speak Portuguese? Should I say do it in Portuguese? Whatever works for you. So if you're doing the Portuguese one, we can do it the same. Uh, and for the purpose of the workshop, I'm just going to use the same reference and I would just fix it later because it's good to have references in the language that we're talking about. So you can see my cursor, it's right here in Latin America after the term Latin America. And I'm going to go back to the reference, the quote. link uh, right here, the button, and I'm going to paste that reference in the automatic. And again, there's a manual and I can reuse sources. They are already included in the article, which is every single little after the, the, the word blue button here. And I'm going to generate Gira, this link. And Wikipedia is so smart that they will give me the citation in the Portuguese standard as well and i'm going to insert and here we go this really interesting reference about women artists will be published on wikipedia and i'm gonna hit publica and i would love for you to do the same and tell me about your experience knowing that we are kind of about time but this is Kira. i see want to highlight that janice has their hand raised Yes, please. We find you. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. I have a couple of questions. One is if I'm 
Okay, so I know I'm going to be interested in like adding artists or like artists movements. And so I, I looked up one artist and they don't have a page. And it says I could create a draft to be, I guess, reviewed. If I was to do something like that, would it be, if I'm a part of this group, would it be one of you all that would be reviewing a draft if I was to create a new page or draft a new page? That's a good question, Janice. So first things first. Uh, yes, I do recommend if you're thinking about writing about an artist that so have a page, please do it a draft uh, so you don't feel the pressure of creating an article from scratch uh, at the beginning. So you can do, uh, your, on your, you can work on your sandbox and I'm gonna show you. The second thing is just yes and. Yes, if you send the page to us, we will definitely reviewing and helping you with links and formatting especially. Um, but also the rest of the Wikipedia community who is just very invested in reviewing works from other editors will be also looking at your work. Uh, but something we do a lot in our workshops and programs and collectively, um, Alison is not here anymore. I think she went to another meeting, but also Alison holds the town halls, which is amazing. So we work together online from our homes and we kind of share uh, what we do with each other. So it's kind of a peer review process. I really enjoy working collectively this way. So you can, yes, write a draft and send to us. You, I'm sure you have our email addresses and we will be doing this with you um, together. So, and then we'll be for the community, will be actually for everybody who is just reading and looking at articles online. Okay. What else? That sounds great. I, I mean, I know that's a goal and I need to start by some of the steps that you all went through. I need to go through again because I'm like, where did you find that? Um, so knowing that, like, so we either, we can reach out or you said these town halls are places that we can show up online to like, basically continue to practice. Absolutely. If you go on the art and feminism website, there's a whole, uh, event list and you can, you know, sign up for them. And it's amazing. It's just a beautiful way of community building as well. You get to know so many interesting, amazing wonderful people uh, invested in doing this work. And it's so helpful because your questions are the questions of other people and we learn it with each other and from each other. It's just really amazing. Of course, you know, you can join in in more of these virtual spaces, but um, for asynchronous uh, help, the Telegram group is a great place for that. I guess, Thank you to Michaela and Terry for these wonderful exercises and um, sharing your knowledge with us. Um, like this is the first time we've done like a virtual writing workshop and I love this experience and I hope that we get to do some more. Um, so if you did love this also, you know, make sure that you subscribe to Art and Feminism. Let us know what you think. If you have feedback, you can always send us an email. Um, and of course, join the campaign, organize your own events, uh, continue editing with us. And we have so many resources to support that includes funding. Um, we have like a small amount for our funding, but the foundation, you can get up to like 5,000 for events. So there's a, there's a lot of support to go around for, for this work. And thank you again uh, for coming through.